welcome to another Fresh Iron video, and we are going to talk about differentiating levels of consciousness. Okay, so this is for patients um, who, you know, differentiating between that awake, alert, and unresponsive, and all that gray area in between the two. Okay, very important if your patient has a neurological compromise or level of consciousness changes because they can be very subtle, and it's important to know the differences between all of them. Another thing. Orientation, meaning their level of confusion, like do they know who they are and where they are. That's a different video. This is purely level of consciousness and can they maintain their level of alertness and how to assess that, okay? We'll talk about orientation in a different video. Okay, so there's multiple levels and we're gonna go through all of them. There's awake and alert, lethargic, um, obtunded, stuporous, and unresponsive, okay? So we're gonna go through all five of those. Quick note, don't use the word comatose or coma. All right, guys, just please don't use that word. <laughs> it is very um, unclear what that means. I have seen um, patients and loved ones, people refer to the word coma in very different ways. Like I've had people refer to a patient who's just sleeping all the time as being in a coma. Um, ones who will wake up and interact just fine, but they call it in a coma. Um, you know, they just don't have a clear understanding of what coma means. So what we say instead, if they're that totally unresponsive patient is unresponsive. Okay. So just try not to use the word coma. Let's be a little bit more clear. Okay. And about what that actually, you know, what, what we're actually seeing. So number one is awake and alert. That means you walk into the room. If they're sleeping, you can say, Mr. Smith, they wake up, they interact with you and they can maintain that level of alertness throughout the entire interaction. They're able, if they decide to fall back asleep, it's intentional, it's not like they're overcome by um, being so tired, okay? So, you know, that's a pretty straightforward one, awake and alert. You're gonna, most of your patients probably are awake and alert unless you're in a neuro ICU. The next, so here's awake and alert. The next level down is going to be lethargic. Okay, so that's someone who's very sleepy that maybe you don't, you can't just say, Mr. Smith, wake up. You have to use like shake their shoulder, Mr. Smith, wake up, and then they'll wake up. Now during that interaction, they may blink their eyes kind of slow. <laughs> they may just, they, they're they uh, clearly very sleepy. They're not alert and quick, quick with their responses, crisp with their speech, although we could have other speech issues, but th you know, they're, they're not, they're not all there with you. Um, they may fall asleep a few times during the interaction. You may need to re-wake them up. Um, and I like to, a way that you can kind of consider this is it's, it's more than sleepy. It's more than that, you know, I stayed up all night, I just really want to lay down. Um, it's much, much more than that. It is like severe drowsiness. So how do you differentiate between sleepy and lethargic? So my neuro nurse way of doing that is if I'm not sure if someone truly is just sleepy versus lethargic, if I flip on all the bright lights in the room, I pull the covers down and I sit the head of the bed straight up, you know, and if they can't, despite those interventions, be able to sit up and have a conversation with me and maintain a level of alertness, um, that's more than I'm sleepy, okay? Important to know because, you know, in the neuro world, we're waking patients up all the time. They're gonna be sleepy, okay? Definitely expected. But someone who's sleepy can should still be able to wake up and chat with you. They're the If they're to the level of um, sleepy where they're falling asleep during the interaction, that's more than sleepy. That's where we're crossing into lethargic, okay? Next, so we did awake, alert, lethargic. Now we're getting down um, to obtunded. So obtunded is they fall asleep multiple times during the interaction. Not only um, do you, you have to wake them up, but you also have to like use verbal and tactile stimulation to awaken them. So they, you can't just walk in the room and say, Mr. Smith, um, this person is probably asleep most of the time, eyes closed, not interacting. They have to be shake, sh shook, shaken, shookern, shook, uh, uh, shaken, I guess, right guys? To be woken up. Um, they can't maintain that level of alertness very long. Um, and it's, you know, very apparent that we are, we're going down from lethargic. So now we're gonna to go to the next one, which is stuporous. So awake, alert, lethargic, obtunded, stuporous. 
um, or stupor, it might be in the charting, stupor, stuporous. They will only awaken to vigorous um, tactile stimulation. You can walk in the room, you can clap your hands, you can do a little dance and scream at them, they're not waking up. Um, you have to like vigorous, you know, shaking, don't do that a whole bunch, but you know, like shake them, hey Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, and maybe they'll open their eyes and then they'll close them again. Um, you may actually realistically have to use painful stimuli to wake them up. Their brain is so compromised that um, they can't, it's not telling them despite loud stimulation, verbal stimulation, and tactile stimulation to wake up, you have to actually use pain. Um, so the painful stimuli, there's only certain acceptable ones that you can use, but the three I recommend, um, a trap pinch is um, acceptable, supraorbital pressure, that little notch right here, you push on it, that really hurts. Um, and then also, um, um, sternal pressure, not a sternal rub, but sternal pressure. You get your knuckles, you put them on someone's sternum and you push down. Um, that that will should wake them up um, immediately, unless something is really going on, or really, really badly going on. So basically you elicit the painful stimuli to see if their brain can interpret that pain is occurring, and then that should wake them up. But with a stuporous patient, the, the painful stimuli works they will still wake up and respond, but they're gonna fall right back asleep, okay? So the goal is to like, okay, um, let's see if I can wake them up. Can they follow commands? Can they do whatever? Are they being purposeful with their movement? Like if I, if I, you know, push on their sternum and they wake up and they readjust or they scratch somewhere or whatever, that shows me they can move that extremity with purpose. That's helpful to know. Um, but when we're getting down to stuporous, this is a patient who's constantly asleep. I'm worried about their ability to maintain their airway. Um, I've got a lot of concerns if this is a new finding. Um, so stuporous is a very um, bottom and then to the very very bottom is unresponsive so this is a patient that no matter how loud I would scream no matter how much shaking I would do or how much painful stimuli they're not waking up they're not making any movements um, and this this is a very serious patient is probably on a ventilator they are probably in the ICU kind of situation um, they don't they're so their brain is so um, impacted negatively that they probably don't even need sedation to be on a ventilator, if that makes sense. Um, if you have profoundly impaired neurological patients that are on a ventilator, they probably are not on sedation because the damage is that bad. Um, so those are your levels, okay? Awake and alert, lethargic, obtunded, stuporous, unresponsive. All right, so those are your levels of consciousness, and you know you want to know. I started here today. Oh boy, it's taken a lot more work for me to wake them up. Oh man, I need to actually like use repeated verbal and tactile stimulation to wake them up, and they can't maintain their level of alertness. So going from awake and alert to obtunded, that's a big that's a big change, okay? And it's important to know where on that scale your patient is, and so that you can know when it changes. So that first assessment at the beginning of the shift have a very clear understanding of what their level of consciousness was. So I hope those different levels and explanations really helped you out. If you want some more neuro nurse resources, in the description I've got some links for you um, to have a lot of different free resources and I even have a comprehensive neuro course that you can check out as well. Thanks nurses, stay fresh.